All right, so we have three objects in this system. So we are asked to find the total gravitational potential energy in the system and the force of gravity between objects number two and three. So first, how we'll begin this is by stating that these are your two equations for both the force of gravity, and obviously that's a vector, so we'll use that, and the gravitational potential energy. This differs from the previous gravitational potential energy where we were dealing with stuff like if we have a change in height between here and here. Because these are objects that are already on a planet, which is different, whereas here we're kind of dealing like a planetary system. So we're going to use different equations for that planetary system. The equation for this one, because I'm going to begin with that one because that's number one, is the gravitational constant times the two masses divided by the radius between those masses, which makes sense because if you increase that radius, the force of gravity between the two gets much lesser. And then if you increase the masses of those objects, the force of gravity gets stronger between those objects. And then the gravitational constant is just a, it's a number, it's a very small number. I actually have it on my calculator over here. It's a very small number. Validating OS, cool. So it's a very small number, there we go. 6.67 e to the negative 11th. So that's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th power. And to show that's just a huge string of zeros after that decimal after that decimal spot. So we normally leave these in Gs. So how exactly would we go about solving this first problem? So first thing we have to remember is that we base any of these on the amount of interactions between the system, mainly just this one because this one specifies two objects for us. So that means we're dealing with the interactions between these two objects. So that means that we're going to talk about object one, object two, and object three, which can interact with object two and three, which can interact with object one and three. And I'm gonna grab my other red pen to see if it's any better. Oh, perfect. And then three can interact with two and one. So then we can make pairs with these. We have one and two, one and three, two and one, two and three, three and two, two, or no, three and two, and three and one. And then we'll eliminate all the repeats. One and three and three and one are repeats. So we'll eliminate those. Three and two are not. Two and one, that's a repeat there. Two and three, three and two, yes it is. So we have our three pairs here. We have three interactions. One can interact with two and three, and then obviously we have two and three. Of course, you could have just looked at that yourself, but when you start getting into more than just three, it's better to just make these pairs. So now that we've made these pairs, we know what can interact with what. One and two, two and three, one and three. And I'm going to use those two, those three, like these three numbers to represent that. So now we'll think about how this interacts here. And we're looking for the total gravitational potential energy, which means that we're going to we're going to find the sum of all of that. So making sure I picked up the right pen, yes I did. So I'm going to use sigma U G capital G to specify that it's different from the other one is equal to the U G between one and two plus the U G between one and three plus the u g between two and three. So now we'll actually plug all of these into our equation here. We have equal to g mass one, which is just m times mass two, which is two m times the distance between, or divided by the distance between those two, which is r plus g mass one times mass three, which would be m times three m over two r. And then we'll have plus g now two and three. So we'll have two m times three m over two r. And then we press equal again, multiply this entire thing here by two over two so we can get those denominators all rationalized. So here we have four. So four gm squared over 
2R plus 3GM squared over 2R plus 6GM squared over 2R. Add those all together. We get the sum of all UG is equal to 4 plus 3 plus 6. So that is 13GM squared over 2 times the radii. And that is the answer, except if we wanted to do units, we would say it is in joules. And that's the answer to the total UG in the system. So now, if we erase this, we can now do number 2. Number 2 is the force of gravity between objects 2 and 3. So we'll just plug it into that equation again. I'm going to use a different pen because I didn't like that one. So force of gravity between 2 and 3. We're talking about 2 and 3, so force of gravity is g m1 m2 so we're going to do m2 m3 because those are the ones we're talking about is equal to force of gravity i don't need to put that vector sign because obviously it's going to be just between two and three it's going to be here and here so all over the radius between those two squared so that is equal to big g times 2m times 3m all over 2r squared. So the force of gravity is equal to 6gm squared over 4r squared, which simplifies to 3 over 2. And that here is our force of gravity. This would be in Newton's. That there is our force of gravity. And that's how you do the gravitation part to physics.